How the heck did life originate on Earth? Yeah, well, maybe I'll come to that in a second, but I think the ultimate use of AI is to kind of use it to accelerate science to the maximum. So I um, think of it a little bit like the tree of all knowledge. If you imagine that's all the knowledge there is in the universe to attain. And uh, we sort of barely scratched the surface of that so far, in, even though you know we've, we've, we've done pretty well since the Enlightenment, right, as humanity. And I think AI will turbocharge all of that like we've seen with AlphaFold. And I want to explore as much of that tree of knowledge as it's possible to do. And, um, and I think that involves AI helping us with, with, with understanding or finding patterns, um, but also potentially designing and building new tools, experimental tools. So I think that's all, uh, uh, and, and also running simulations and learning simulations. All of that, we're already, we're sort of doing at a, at a, at a, at a, you know, baby steps level here. But I can imagine that in, in, in the decades to come as, uh, you know, what's the full flourishing of, of that line of thinking. It's going to be truly incredible, I would say. If I visualize this tree of knowledge, something tells me that that knowledge for, tree of knowledge for humans is much smaller in the set of all possible trees of knowledge, it's actually quite small, given our cognitive limitations, um, limited cognitive capabilities, that even with the, with the tools we build, we still won't be able to understand a lot of things. And that's perhaps what non-human systems might be able to reach farther, not just as tools, yeah. but in themselves understanding something that they can bring back. Yeah, it could well be. So, I mean, there's so many things that that, that, that that are sort of encapsulated in what you just said there. I think, first of all, um, there's there's two different things. There's like, what do we understand today? Yeah. What could the human mind understand? And what is the totality of what is there to be understood? Yeah. Right? And so there's three concentric, you know, you can think of them as three larger and larger trees or exploring more branches of that tree. And I, I think with AI, we're going to explore that whole lot. Now, the question is, is, uh, uh, you know, if you think about, what is the totality of what could be understood? Um, there may be some fundamental physics reasons why certain things can't be understood, like what's outside a simulation or outside the universe. Maybe it's not understandable from within the universe. Um, so that's there may be some hard constraints like that. You know, it could be smaller constraints like um, we think of space time as fundamental. For us, our human brains are really used to this idea of a three dimensional world with time. Right. Maybe, but our tools could go beyond that. Yeah. They wouldn't have that limitation necessarily. They could think in eleven dimensions, twelve dimensions, whatever is needed. But um, we could still maybe understand that in several different ways. The example I always give is um, when I, you know, play Gary Kasparov at speed chess, or we've talked about chess and these kind of things. Um, you know, he, if you, if you, if you're reasonably good at chess, you can, um, you can't come up with the move Gary comes up with in mm -hmm. his move, but he can explain it to you. And you right? can understand. And you can understand post hoc the reasoning. Yeah. So so I think there's a there's an even further level of like, well, maybe you couldn't have invented that thing, but but using like going back to using language again, perhaps you can understand and appreciate that. Same way like you can appreciate, you know, Vivaldi or Mozart or something without you can appreciate the beauty of that without um, being able to to construct it yourself, right? Invent yeah. the music yourself. So I think we see this in all forms of life. So it'll be that times, you know a million but it would you can imagine also one sign of intelligence is the ability to explain things clearly and simply mm. right you know people like richard Feynman, another one of my all-time heroes used to say that right if you can't you know if you can explain it something simply then you that's a that's the best sign a complex topic simply then that's one of the best signs of you understanding it yeah so um, i can see myself talking trash in the ai system in that way yes uh <laughs> it's, it's, it gets frustrated how dumb i am and in, in trying to explain something <laughs> to me i was like well that means you're not intelligent because if you were intelligent you'd be able to explain it simply yeah of course you know there's 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 also the other option, of course, we could enhance ourselves and, and with our devices, we, we are already sort of symbiotic with our compute devices, right? With our phones and other things. And, you know, there's stuff like Neuralink and et cetera that could, be, could, could advance that further. Um, so I think there's lots of, lots of really amazing possibilities uh, that, that I could foresee from here.